There are some truly outstanding bladesmiths working out of Poland these days, and many of them charge a pretty penny for their work, ranging up past 5,000 euros. What can you expect to receive from a Polish smith whose prices are closer to, or even a little lower than, your typical Albion? Hello, this is Kyle, also known as AlienTube, here with a review of an Incarius Craft Warsword. So, what's the story with Incarius Craft? It's Polish blacksmith Rafał Wolszczyna's business. I apologize for my poor pronunciation. Mr. Wolszczyna has been crafting swords for around six years now, and started working full-time as a blacksmith three and a half years ago. Unfortunately, he hasn't had the opportunity to study any antiques, so he digs into books for as much knowledge as he can find. At this point, he makes around 60 to 70 swords each year, focusing on a wide variety of medieval swords. I bought this sword when Mr. Vostrina posted it on his Facebook account, available for 500 euros plus shipping. I inquired about a scabbard, which he said would cost 150 euros for a basic one, with more decoration available for additional cost. After some discussion, we settled on the design you see in this video, and the total cost was 800 euros, which at the time was approximately 950 US dollars. This did include shipping as well. The estimated completion time for the scabbard was one to two weeks, but it ended up taking seven before it was done and shipped, and then another two weeks to receive it. I found discussing the sword and scabbard with Mr. Vostrina very pleasant, and although most of the updates he provided were initiated by my requests, he was always prompt at replying. Earlier, I called this a war sword, and that's because it's a big, beefy example of a Type 12A sword, which were sometimes referred to as great swords of war. Type 12A swords were hand-and-a-half to two-handed cut focus swords that feature a long fuller, usually running about two-thirds of the way up the blade. The cross-section was always lenticular, and the profile was broad at the base, evenly tapering to a rounded acute point. When looking at many modern reproductions of Type 12A swords, there's two areas that are often done incorrectly, the cross-section and the point. I'll use my Balor Arms 14th century longsword as a comparison here. It has a bit too strong of a central ridge for a true lenticular cross-section. And the tip also is considerably more acute, not as rounded as a true 12A. The Incaria sword is much more correctly shaped. Moving on to the scabbard, there's quite a bit to discuss here. When deciding on the design, I wanted a Latin phrase that would seem appropriate for the time period, and after some googling, I eventually settled on this phrase, typed out here because there is no chance I would pronounce it correctly, which translates to, the Lord is my light. Mr. Vostrina showed me several pictures of scabbards he'd done before, and I selected some design elements from them along with the lettering. Looking at the leather tooling, it's done very well, creating an incredibly attractive scabbard that I absolutely love the look of. The letter S at the end of the first word is somewhat misaligned, but that's really the only flaw I can see. When I received the sword, the fit to the scabbard was very snug, bordering on what I would consider too tight. And now, well, see for yourself. So I wanted to show you what unfortunately has happened with this scabbard. If I put it in, Moves in slowly, it's starting, already starting to get stuck a little bit. Right there is about as far as I can go without it really getting stuck hard. And actually I can already start to hear a little bit of wood cracking if I push it any further. So I'm not gonna do that. I tried a few things to get it to f loosen up the wood a little bit, nothing worked. And I actually at one point got it s stuck in there so far I spent about 15 minutes just tugging as hard as I could to separate them and eventually got them out. So unfortunately the scabbard is just non-functional at this point, it's just a display piece. While working on the review, I mentioned this problem to Mr. Vostrina and he quickly offered to send me a replacement scabbard, a plain one without the decoration. Personally I think that's a very generous offer and speaks volumes to his customer service. I haven't received that replacement scabbard, I imagine it could be a couple of months, but I'll post a follow-up video when I do. Moving on to the sword itself, starting with the hilt. 
The cross guard is representative of an oak shot type 2 with octagonal quillins that have a very slight wasted shape to them. The whole thing is a little on the large and chunky side, probably to balance the size of the sword overall. It's well formed and has a nice satin polish. The gap at the blade is barely there. This is pretty much as small as you can expect for this style of guard. It shows a good deal of craftsmanship and attention to detail, on par with, if not slightly better than most Albions. The Pommel. This is a very complex shape that is what I would call a variation of a Type K Pommel, with the 10 facets on each side giving it a more geometric look. From what I can tell, this style of well-defined facets was not very common historically. Here's a few examples of somewhat similar pommels that I found. Looking at the facets, they're all nicely crafted, smoothly swelling up into the center, and while the entire thing is somewhat asymmetrical, especially comparing the two sides, that doesn't detract from the look for me. One thing I would have liked to see, what would really bring it to the next level, would be a little taper to the thickness, to give it that extra bit of dimension. The grip is a very slender wood core with an extremely tight leather wrap and corded texture. The risers are as well defined as I've seen in a sword, and the die job is excellent as well. However, there's not a ton of dimension or complexity to the shape. While it features a slight swell in the center, it's mostly straight and without much to aid the hands in holding on. More on that in the handling portion of the review. So now it's time to talk about the business end, the blade. Here's the measurements I took of the sword. I should mention that you might see some scuffs, marks, and general mars to the surface of the blade. They weren't there when I received it from Incarius. It was pretty much pristine. These are mostly leftovers from me having the sword sharpened. And that segues nicely into discussion of the sharpness. The sword originally came with excellent edge geometry, although with a micro bevel rather than one perfect smooth grind all the way to the edge. And while it was sharp, it wasn't quite sharp enough for my taste. So I had a local sharpener put a more apple-seeded edge on it, and he brought it close to shaving sharp. Visually, this does produce more of a secondary bevel look, but that's more the result of the finish of the sword than anything else. The shaping is nicely blended. Pulling back from the edge, let's talk about the geometry of the sword. It starts at 4.7 millimeters thick, very slowly tapering down to 3.9 millimeters just past the fuller, then rapidly down to 3 millimeters just at the tip. This is a little thinner stock than I'd prefer on a big 12A sword like this. I think it would be beneficial for the sword to start closer to 6mm thick, much like Albion's 12A Sword of War, the Baron. Even so, the sword is nicely stiff at the base and flexes well while returning to true. The blade's vibration note is a little closer to the grip than I'd expect, but not egregiously so. The fullers run very straight and even, terminating a little abruptly. It'd be nice to see them blend into the lenticular cross-section more, but that's a pretty minor nitpick. They end at just about the same spot on both sides, and there's no rippling in them, nor on the surface of the blade. It's all smooth and finished quite nicely. Let's talk handling. So, how does it handle? Well, it's a big, hefty sword. You know, it weighs getting close to four pounds. Point of balance is pretty good. It's like about five and a quarter inch, I believe. Eh, right around there. I feel like, generally speaking, it moves the way I want it to. It doesn't really feel point heavy or too far forward balanced, which is actually kind of surprising because when I measured the tip weight, I believe it was around 350 grams which is a bit on the hefty side for a sword, for a uh, long sword. But I generally have pretty good tip control. I know where the sword's going pretty much all the, always. The biggest concern I have with handling is not the blade or anything like that, it's the grip. 
The grip is very slender. So when I grip it tightly and try to hold it, you can see I can slide it around very easily. I'm, I'm gripping it as tightly as I can with my right hand and I am my right hand is my dominant hand. And I can, I can just twist it pretty easily. I think that's because of two things. First, you know, this, like I said, the grip is very slender. But it's also, there's not a lot of dimension to it. There's, it's a, it's a little bit thicker here than here, obviously, but not by a lot. And there's no like tape, there's, there's a little bit of taper, but there's no, <clears throat> there's not a lot of change in dimension. Like, like there's certainly not an octagonal section or even a wasted grip or much of a swell anywhere. It's very smooth going from a little bit thicker here and then just slightly tapering down here. And that's, there might be a little bit of a swell here. Yeah, there's a little bit from here to here and then it tapers back down again, but not a whole lot. So there's just not a lot of um, feedback to keep the edge alignment good. And for me, edge alignment on this type of sword is already kind of difficult because with the cross section with the lenticular, it, uh, it vibrates and wobbles a little bit more when you're swinging it. So you, you really have to be on point with your swings. If you're off a little bit, it's, going, it's not gonna cut very well. And then when you combine that with the grip not, being, not doing me any favors and keeping my edge alignment right, it's a little bit tricky. So one other interesting note is this pommel. You know, this is a, uh, these, I'm not sure what these are called, these posts, whatever they are. They're uh, prominent and they can bite into the hand. Like if I just hold it like that, with my palm right on it, when I swing, I, I mean, that's not even full power at all. And I started feeling that bite into the hand. What I, if I choke up a little bit, it's fine. You know, hold it, rest my palm against that swell, it's fine. But it doesn't feel right. I feel like I should be holding it at the pommel to get more leverage in the cut. So it's a little bit awkward there. I think if I were wearing gloves, that would uh, remove that problem. But I think gloves would make it even harder to maintain a good grip on this sword because the gloves would be, at least the leather gloves I have are fairly slick. So it would, that would kind of be hard to hold on. And now on to some test cutting. I did two cutting sessions with this sword, one before I had it sharpened and one after.
Overall, I found that while the sword is sharp and can get some good cuts, I'm not very proficient with it. I found it hard to accelerate well, and I had some difficulty with edge alignment. While the slender grip and flexibility of the sword certainly played a part in that, I think my struggles were mostly a product of my poor technique, rather than an indictment of the sword. I'm much more used to the more rigid swords of the later medieval period, and my rudimentary skills let me and the sword down. So now it's time to talk bottom line. Is this sword and scabbard worth the approximately 950 US dollars I paid? There's some trickiness to this question, especially because the scabbard is now relegated to display purposes only. The sword itself is extremely nice for the price, even if I do have a number of minor complaints, such as the grip design. If the price had been $950 for just the sword alone, I don't think it would justify that price, since it could use some refinements here and there. But the sword itself was 500 euros, and that's a very attractive price and well worth it. I'm not so sure about the scabbard. I think the leather work is absurdly well done and absolutely gorgeous, and if it had kept the fit to the sword, it and the sword combined would be a steal for the price. But I don't know. Is it fair to dock points here because the wood expanded? I've had a good number of scabbards made for me that have not had this issue, so I wonder if the wood Mr. Voschina uses might need to be treated better to keep it from expanding. In any case, I'm going to withhold final judgment until I receive the replacement scabbard he's promised me. Look for a follow-up video sometime in the future for that. And that's going to wrap up this review. Thank you for watching, and until next time, Alien Toot out.